up. It's utter mayhem. <laughs> utter mayhem. <laughs> Fighting over bananas, God. Terrific. For about three or four days. And then they got it. They didn't get it, they, they remembered it. They remembered some of that independence. They brought their snacks in at the start of the day and they put them on the table. I even made my own little sign that said snack. <laughs> Laminated it. <laughs> and we had a rule. If I was talking, I was doing a bit of modelling, nobody moved, that was it. You don't go get your snack there. But whilst you're working, if you're doing your writing in your book, if you're doing some maths work in your book, if you're working on something, then go, if you want to snack, go and get it. And what I realised was that it, it actually, Year six can cope with that. They can go and get a snack and they can go back and they can carry on with their maths work whilst eating segments of a satsuma. <laughs> and it doesn't put them off. And that's one tiny example of that. Where do we put pencils? Where do we put blue sticks and stuff like that? If we're interested in encouraging independence through the learning process, think about that. I've got these kids and actually I'm not dealing with me more able and less able tables. I've got a group of children. And that group of children are going to be successful in their learning because they're supported with waggles, they're supported with visual waggles, they're supported with a workshop they can drop into and drop out of, and they're self-selecting all of that. So actually what I've got here is an element of freedom of movement around the room. And so maybe this is just a, the next step. Actually, let's support that freedom of movement by making sure the resources they need are accessible to them, not just contained within a pencil pod. Because that young man with the banana difficulty, he had a pencil difficulty. Because what he was used to, what he'd become accustomed to, was whenever he needed anything, all he did was lean. He leant into the middle of his table, and if it wasn't there, he panicked. 